The Middle Ages was a time of great change and innovation in Europe. However, it was also a time when knowledge about hygiene and cleanliness was limited and many people lived in unsanitary conditions. How were they dealing with hygiene? What were women using during their time of the month? And how did they handle brain surgery? They didn't know much about germs and hygiene, and so people in the Middle Ages did things that will probably make you feel sick to your stomach. Welcome to History Uncovered, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Because toothbrushes weren't invented yet, the medieval people had to rely on other forms of dentistry to keep their teeth clean. They would rinse their mouths with water and wipe their teeth clean with a cloth. To freshen their breath, they chew on herbs like mint, sage, and cinnamon. That doesn't sound that bad actually, right? However, once the Elizabethan era began, keeping their teeth clean became a little grosser. White teeth were seen as a symbol of health and wealth, so people started to scrub their teeth with a mixture of vinegar, wine and the ashes of burnt rosemary as toothpaste. It did help to brighten their teeth, but the smell was absolutely disgusting. A lot of people also had rotting teeth, which needed to be pulled out. At this time, barbers were also employed as dentists, and would pull out everything that was rotting or sore. Yup, without any anesthetic. Can you imagine the pain? But women had to deal with other things besides dentistry. They had to deal with discomfort during their time of the month, without any pads or tampons we have nowadays. So what did they use during their period? Since clean, sanitary tampons and pads weren't available, women had to use something a little more natural to absorb their flow. Especially, the women from poor classes had to use moss to soak up everything. They just went into the forest, got some moss and let it absorb their flow. Could you imagine doing that nowadays? At the time, physicians believed that it had antiseptic qualities. Since they believed that menstruation was considered dangerous and poisonous, they thought that moss would be the perfect thing to use. It was also widely available, but moss was also reusable, you just had to squeeze out everything and it was ready to be used again. Gross right? An interesting thing to know about the Middle Ages is that they liked to use their pee for lots of things, like a lot. They used it as a face wash, and it was believed to have antiseptic qualities that made it perfect for cleaning wounds, a gross right? But did you know that it was also used for washing clothes? Now, they didn't wash their clothes very often, so they often used water and some herbs to make their clothes smell a little better. But, they wore their clothes for days and sometimes even weeks on end. King James of Scotland would even wear the same clothes until they fell apart. To remove stains and dirt from clothes, they used a mixture of ashes, crushed green grapes, lye and chicken feathers, and, yes, urine. Imagine what that would smell like. Talking about pee, you probably know of chamber pots. In the Middle Ages, plumbing wasn't invented yet, so they didn't have toilets as we know them nowadays. Instead, they had a chamber pot that were often kept under the bed in case someone needed to do his business during the night. Someone just squatted over the bowl, pee in it and then put it right back under the bed. Can you imagine sleeping above your dirty business? Pretty gross, if you ask us. But where did they put their business after that? Well, they simply threw the contents right out the window on the streets. You really had to look out back in the Middle Ages. In addition to the chamber pots, the people in the Middle Ages did have some sort of sewer system. They created cesspits, which were large, deep holes in the ground where people would then dump their personal waste. But, since more and more people were living in cities during the 16th century, the streets became too nasty with all kinds of nastiness. The cesspits were invented to reduce the amount of waste being left on the city streets. But the cesspits also had a downside. You can imagine that the cesspits are the perfect breeding grounds for diseases, since the poo was left out in the open and they did clean the cesspits only every 10 years. The cleaning was done by people known as jakes. It was a dirty job, but it certainly did pay well. To reduce the risk of contamination and infection, we now understand that maintaining a sterile atmosphere is crucial while practicing medicine. But back then, people held a slightly different set of beliefs. In most cases, doctors would not wash their hands before operating on a patient, and they would hardly ever clean or disinfect the surgical instruments they used in between operations. To be fair, the water at the time was not the best to use, it was kept in lead line tanks. Due to the lack of understanding about germs and microbes at the time, doctors did not link the number of postoperative deaths to the presence of these organisms. 
Knowing that the equipment being used on one individual had likely already been inside the body of many others before them, and hadn't even been cleaned, is fairly disgusting. In fact, it wasn't until the middle of the 1800s that handwashing before an operation became standard practice after Hungarian Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis identified a link between doing so and reducing your risk of contracting an infection. One of the most well-known medieval practices, and undoubtedly one of the most unsettling, is this one. Blood was taken from a person during the bloodletting procedure in order to treat an illness. Leeches were sometimes employed to remove the dirty blood in order to make the subject well again, or an incision may be made into a person's vein and blood allowed to trickle out into a basin. The ill bodily part was attached to the leech, which fed until it became fat enough to slip off. The four humors, which doctors believed combined a person's body, were balanced by doing this. Leech use and bloodletting were so typical that many individuals would perform them on their own, without consulting a physician, just because they thought it would make them feel better. In reality, we are aware that losing a significant amount of blood weakens you rather than strengthening you. In the medieval era and beyond, wearing a wig was a sign of money, style, and beauty. Particularly in 18th century France, wigs frequently became so intricate and heavy that carrying them around hurt both men and women's necks. These wigs may have appeared expensive, but they were actually quite unpleasant. They were created with highly combustible animal fat to maintain their shape, and they were also a large host to lice. While it's customary for people to take their hats off before they sit down to a meal today as a symbol of respect, in the medieval era, doing so would have resulted in a shower of lice falling upon the table. While many people attempted to prevent this by shaving their hair short or keeping it long, the lice felt just as at home in their wigs, which were composed of either human or animal hair, and so they were unable to be removed. How could we expect physicians in medieval Europe to be better at dealing with issues of the mind when we already know that they weren't exactly informed when it came to matters of the body? Trepanning involves drilling a tiny hole through the skull to expose the brain's outer membrane, relieving pressure and curing the patient of conditions like mental illness, epilepsy, and migraines. Naturally, it was not a good idea to expose the brain to all the airborne pathogens that were circulating owing to the various hygiene practices we've covered, and many people perished as a result. Trepanning hasn't entirely been abandoned, despite the fact that it seems painful and horrifyingly cruel. Two men in the United States treated a woman with depression and chronic fatigue syndrome with this technique in 2000. It's obvious that this is a practice that should be abandoned. You might want to avoid knowing about Canopy Bed's unpleasant history if you thought they were romantic, bohemian, and the ideal setting for your Instagram photos. Although Canopy Beds used to be more functional than beautiful, they now have a stunning appearance. Since slaves or handmaids might be lodging in the same chamber, canopy beds, which were mostly used by aristocracy or wealthy residents, allowed for the maintenance of privacy among the sleepers. However, the overhang of canopies also offered security from the danger of unpleasant items dropping upon a clean bed in addition to being like a wonderful secret cave. It was crucial to keep a roof in good shape, but because of the elements, sloppy construction, and subpar materials, a roof can open up more frequently than desired. People had to deal with nasty things like bird and rat dropping falling upon their beds when this occurred or when animals roost in the roof. Naturally, the canopy bed provided an excellent solution by shielding the sleeper from the gross animal excrement. Would you live in the Middle Ages? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.